And then somebody will say, it's the time to do what? Time to do what? It's the time to call upon the master. It's the time during this lockdown, it's the time to know that in this world there is the master. And that's Jesus himself. This is the time that we need to know. If we miss this time, we perish. I'm reading from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 37 to 39. Uh, and there arose a storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. This is Jesus now. And they awoke him up and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and the waves. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. May the Lord bless us as we listen to his words. May his words find a place in our hearts. We are given a situation that helps us to explain the now is the time aspect. And I've told you the time is the lockdown. What are we supposed to do during this time? I'm saying we are supposed to know and a call upon the master. The disciples were sailing. That's the scenario that we are using. They were sailing and these were not new people on the waters. Amongst the disciples of Jesus, they were professional fishermen. The people who were trained and skilled in managing waters. They would know to manage the winds that were blowing from the north. They would manage and do their business because it was their profession. They knew how to deal with all sorts of storms. They were skillful. They were experienced. They had the expertise of managing water. In fact, when we use the words of Paul, Paul tells us that in his life, on the sea as you are sailing. There was a time when three times he was shipwrecked. And yet he survived. He knew how to go through the, 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 the storms to a point where the ship is broken into pieces and still Paul will tell the story after the ship has been wrecked. He says three times, not even once. I was shipwrecked. He says, I know what it is to be in the danger, in the storm. He says, I know. He says, there is a day when I just floated on the water for one and a half days. In the danger of the sea. In the danger of the great storm. I'm simply showing that this background we are being told about danger in the sea, about the great storm it's not a kid's story. It's a practical story where people who were trained, where people who had experience, where people who had skills found themselves in the danger of the great storm. Now when these men found themselves in that situation, they tried all what their experience could remind them. They found themselves in a great storm and they tried all the inventions that would solve their problem. I want to hasten and tell you this afternoon. The world has found itself in a great, great storm. 
a storm that is life-threatening, a storm that beats all knowledge, a storm that silences all intelligent people. No one has an answer. Can I try and define minds for you? There are people who have a closed mind. They don't think. They just don't do anything. And they don't care. There is no solution we can get from such like people. But there are also people with simple minds. They deal with basic things. When others are doing great things, they are on the basic line. When there is a great storm, these are not the people to tend to. And I want to tell you also, there are people with average minds. They can do those helpful common things and we can rely on them on simple errands because their minds can actually work and really come up with a solution. They really are on the average level and these are the people that we cannot rely on when there is a great storm. But let me also tell you, church, this morning, they are people with sharp minds. These are people who can do very tough stuff. But still, when there is a great storm, those people are silenced. And amongst the disciples of Jesus Christ, there were people like Peter. Sharp boys who can even answer before the question is asked. But the great storm silenced Peter. There were people like Judas Iscariot, chartered accountants, people who can add, not using a calculator, but using his brain and add the figures and tell the budget and the finances. But this time the storm didn't get an answer from Judas Iscariot. There were so many amongst the disciples of Jesus with skills and expertise. But I'm simply telling you that the storm was too great for that. We find ourselves in that situation as we speak. Uh, closed minds cannot help. Simple minds would not help. Average minds would not help. Even sharp minds have been silenced. They can't help. But there is another level, the genius, the brilliant, those people who can actually invent what was not there and make it there, those people who can actually mix and concoct. But when there is a great storm, the one that the, the, the disciples of Jesus found themselves in, there was no genius with a solution. Hence, the situation where we are, no country has filtered, no university has brought up a genius that would unlock this lockdown. When the disciples realized this was the situation, no one amongst them, let me also remind you, that countries, when we say no one, no human effort, let me remind you that countries are also divided into powers. There are countries that have no power. Don't talk about them when there's a great storm. They have no power. They can't help us. There are countries that are powerful. You consult. You ask. You beg. You tend to because they are powerful countries. But this situation where we are, powerful countries have become powerless. With all due respect, let me also tell you that they are super, superpowers. They even have the strength to tell you we are the superpowers. But this time they are silent. They don't talk about their superiority. Because the storm is great. That's why their superiority is not the subject at this time. Because it's greater than their superiority can help. Of course, who doesn't know that the world is also divided into levels? 
There are countries that are non-existent. They are no wealthy at all. And also there are countries that are on level three. Third world. They know themselves. Third world. There are countries that are second world. I've, I've never sat down to list the second world countries because I know the third, I can tell you. And of course, who doesn't know? There are countries that are classified as the first world, world number one. There are countries who matter. They really make the world tick. But I would like to tell you that I'm not a rude person. But I would want to declare that the storm where we find ourselves, don't ask me about the no world. No one goes to them. Don't ask me about the third world because they are good at begging and asking. Don't ask me about the second world because we don't even know who they are. But I want to tell you that even the first world in this storm, they've joined the non-existent worlds because they have no answer, they have no solution. Hence, I'm saying, when all human beings and all their efforts have been locked down and came onto a standstill, now is the time that everybody is silent. Now is the time that when everybody has no answer, now is the time that the people must be humble enough to learn that in the boat, the master is there. The disciples had been sailing for a long time. They didn't care. In fact, his quietness, his falling asleep was a good time for them to do as they please. When the boys uh, are in the absence of their mother, I grew up with the boys and I have boys also. That absence of that authority gives us the liberty to jump around and even crack some silly, at times dirty jokes. Because the authority is not there. The disciples had traveled for a long time on the sea, sailing with the liberty that Jesus, their master, was sleeping. Even when the waves started frowning and getting angry at them, uh, they knew skill number one, you turn left. Skill number two, you turn right. If the water splashes in, you scoop it out. They, they started using their common sense. They could manage all that. When, when water is now even overwhelming you, you can start offloading your cargo so that the ship will be lighter and you go on. But when all those efforts had to come to a standstill. We call it lockdown. When no one wanted to do anything and when no one was silent to suggest anything, that's when they remembered, by the way, Jesus is in the boat. I would like to remind the world. I would like to remind the scholars. I would like to remind all of us that we should know for a long time we have walked alone. I like going out into the farm. I like uh, working on the animals. I like uh, tilling the garden. I like planting flowers. I like so many things. There are things that are really natural of me that I like. And there are times when I just do them without thinking. I'm talking about walking alone. I'm saying as a world, we have really taken the liberty from the time we were born to walk alone. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Do you know even breathing, you forget that there is somebody who is holding the pump into your nostrils. Do you know even your heartbeat, you forget that there is somebody who makes sure the button doesn't switch off. Do you know even the repairing of your body tissues, even if they wear out every second,
there is somebody who makes sure that they are replaced, replenished, that they are kept intact so that there are no potholes in me and you. But do you know, we take the liberty of walking alone, never even caring that there is Jesus who does all that. Think about your life. How many things have you taken for granted? How many times have you walked alone? How many times even some would verbalize and tell you they don't care? They don't care. Some would even laugh you, laugh at you when you say, what did you say? I said, Jesus, who is that? They even really take the liberty to make fun of talking about him. The disciples had sailed for a long time, but until this time came. And I'm saying, we have walked for a long time. The time has come. And when the time came, the disciples approached him. I'm talking to our young people. Many times, our young people, they will block their ears. They enjoy living a life with the ears that are blocked. You see him just shaking his head. Uh, simply showing that there is something, yes, the ears are blocked, but there is something that is hearing, you hear, see them just shaking their heads. You talk to them, they, wait, hey, did, what, did you say, did you call me? Because there is something that has been blocking their ears, I'm simply saying, that's not strange. You are not the first one to do so. The disciples lived a life of blocked ears where they did everything without caring that Jesus was in the boat. But until this time came, and I'm appealing to our youth, don't allow this lockdown time to pass before you do number two. Number two is to know now is the time. Number one is to know now is the time. Number two is to know what to do. So now is the time even for our scholars. You know, I have been to school. Let me tell you. I have been to school. And when you are at school, there are levels of students. There are those who study the whole night. But still, they will sit on the F grade. You ask them to repeat and resit, they would still be below average. Scholars are classified in different levels. But there are those boys who don't even read. There are those boys who don't even scratch. They, 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 it's simple, automatic. They would even tell you, I am naturally intelligent. But I want to appeal to all scholars of all kinds that now is the time even for scholars to know there is number one what is number one? That this is a lockdown. This is a special time that has challenged all systems. Let them stop. And then there's number two. When all systems have been challenged, we need to do number two. What is number two? Let's look for the master. Let us call upon him. The disciples went and said to Jesus, I can read it in the NIV. I can read it in all versions. But when there is a time when I appreciate the old King James version, verse 38, Master. Now, I can even try and imagine. It's not a voice that went and just said, Oh, Master, please, dear Master, never, never, never. Not when there is such a, a great storm. The storm would even challenge your emotions. The storm would even challenge your being a gentleman that you don't yell or scream. The, 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 the storm would even challenge because in front of you, you have two choices. To be rescued or to perish. So the disciples, they went and they shouted, Master! Master! Carest not that we perish. All their pride was gone. All their plans were gone. The only thing that they could remember, we have the master. 
We have the creator. And I would like to appeal and beg. There are some of us who have lived their lives and never cared that they were created. A little clot in your mother's womb. A little, a little zygote or a little uh, fetus developing, growing for all those nine months. Your mother feeding and also feeding for you. Breathing and also breathing for you. That kind of mechanism was being managed by Jesus for nine months until you were born. And when you were born, he is the one who opened your lungs to administer oxygen in and kick out carbon dioxide. He is the one who administered that all the little holes on your skin would start functioning. He is the one who administered all the, uh, the, the, the functions until you grow up. But when you grow up, you forget there is a master. I really want to beg to any secular minds. That says, no, Jesus, nothing. There is a master. And when there is a time like this one, we need to call upon him. Master, I am here because you created me. Master, I am here because I am under your guard and safety. Master, even this great storm, you can take care of. The disciples had, not, they had no precedence to refer to. This was new. But in their minds, they knew that the master would take it. And surely he got up. The master got up. He didn't ask them why they were making such a... He, he just got up. And the Bible says, Shush! Shut up! And the storm was done. There was peace. There was that calm at the master's command. Remember, this was a great storm. It was not the little one. It was not the general one. It was not the common one. This was a great storm. He stood up. He didn't even ask for volunteers to assist him. He didn't even ask to touch button one and button two. Remote control command. Peace. Be still. The time has come for the world to stand up and ask Jesus to command peace in our lives. And I want to tell you, if the world is going to be stubborn, the disciples have already told us that if the master doesn't stand up to pronounce peace, we perish. We perish. It doesn't matter how tall you are. It doesn't matter how pretty you are. It doesn't matter how much you know about yourself. The storm is too great for personal details. The storm only needs the master, not the United Nations, never. The storm needs the master to stand up and command peace. David, from experience, he says, Psalm 20, verse 7, the book of Psalms, chapter 20, Stanza number seven. He says, some people trust when there are storms. Let's go back now. When there are storms, when there is trouble, serious trouble, David says, some people trust in chariots. Some people trust in horses. But he says, wait a minute. Those who do so, who go by chariots, who go by horses, he says, watch out. The lockdown is coming. What are you going to do when there is a lockdown? What are you going to do? David says, some people trust in chariots, some people trust in horses, but he says, we trust in the name of the Lord, our God, the master. The master. These disciples saw it in their lives that when it overwhelms you, turn to the master. And David confirms, he says, Whatever comes your way, don't run to a jet fighter. Don't run to an armored car. Don't run and seek security elsewhere. David says, we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. People, time has come for you to know Jesus is your master. Time has come for you to trust him. Some people trust in their friends. 
and you phone them, you told their dad. Some people trust in their friends. You phone them asking for money. They tell you, I'm bankrupt. David says, I'm just going to sit and trust in the name of the Lord our God. This is the same David who taught Goliath a lesson. First Samuel chapter 17, we are reading verse 45. Goliath was a man of war. You can say Goliath was born in a battlefield. Because the Bible describes Goliath and says he was just fighting and killing people from the time he was a young boy. He was just a murderer. He was just a killer, a warrior. When he saw David, that was the last thing he ever thought of. That was the last, that, that was the, he had never, never seen it in war. That a giant that has a track record of winning battles could be confronted by a little boy with a stick as if he is going for a dog. He was really surprised. But David tries to put Goliath in a lesson, in a kind lecture. No school fees demanded for Goliath to learn this. David says for all your life in, you, in war, this spear has helped you. Go and research the weight of his spear. Uh, go and research how terrible it was. He says in all your war experiences, the spear has been your winning secret. The sword you are accompanying your spear has been your winning secret. The shield, if you read the Bible, Goliath didn't hold his own shield. No. He had a soldier walking in front of him with a shield of protection so that he can be safe from all harm and danger. But David gives a lecture of saying, today you should stop trusting in your spear, you should stop trusting in your shield, you should stop trusting in your sword. He says, David, I'm approaching you by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is it that you are trusting in your life? What is it really that makes you not to think about the master? Because Goliath thought the shield, thought the, 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 the sword, thought the, 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 the spear. S to the power three, those who are mathematicians. S to the power three, number one, the sword. Number two, the shield. Number three, the spear. Those were his secret of success. But David says, not in a great storm. When the storm is great, Put those down and call upon the master. He says, I trust in the name of the Lord our God. With the disciples, when they called upon Jesus, he stood up. He pronounced peace. I would like to invite everyone, you and me, I would like to invite all of us, I would invite all levels. Let us turn to the master and ask him to stand up. Let us turn to the master and ask him to take over. Psalm 46 verse 10. The psalmist is saying, there are some people who trust in chariots. There are some people who trust in horses. Of course, we've done that. But Psalm 46 verse 10, God says, be still and know that I am God. Stop running around. Stop phoning around. Stop touching here and there. Just be still and call upon the master. The disciples, they learned it, they did it, they benefited because they never perished. The master stood up. If we also learn the lesson and really come to Jesus Christ, he is going to take over and stand up and pronounce peace. At this time, I would like to make a call. Talk to your heart now. Tell yourself this is not just lock up because people have no business or lock down because there is no business. This is locked down because people have to know that Jesus is the master. There is a lockdown because people must know that Jesus is in control. Take the name of Jesus with you. I want us to pray. Dear Father in heaven, there is a great storm here on earth. 
there is a great storm that has puzzled all knowledge and wisdom. There is a great storm that defies all our skills and experiences. There is a great storm that really has caused a shutdown worldwide. Dear Father, it is at this time that the story of the disciples become helpful. Our plans are not going to work. Our plans are going to land us on the perishing level. We ask you, Lord, to stand up, save us, or we perish. We cry unto you. We put our pride down and cry unto you. Save us, dear Father. Have mercy on us. We call upon you. Bless us, dear Lord, because we have prayed and asked this. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the church say, Amen.